Right, welcome back to Pro Photo Insights. I'm going to show you today some uh, the setup of uh, the camera for shooting panoramic successfully. Okay, so the first thing um, I'm going to show you is this little plastic gizmo. I'll just do a bit of a close-up in camera. Now, this is obviously just a spirit level, and it just slides in the top of your hot shoe on your camera, and I shall now demonstrate, like so. Um, and this is handy. Uh, it's only a few few pounds, uh, six dollars, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it just slides in the top. Then it helps you just uh, make sure that your horizons are level. Whether you're doing panoramics or not, I find this is a real help, especially if you're doing any kind of interior photography with wide-angle lenses. It can drive me crazy sometimes, wondering if the, everything's level. So. This will save you a bit of frustration and, and it's great for the panoramics. You don't have to shoot panoramics with a spirit level. You can actually you don't have to shoot panoramics with a tripod. You can hand hold them. Um, the stitching software these days is very good, but it's going to help you, uh, I think, to, to, uh, to use a tripod uh, and get your composition right. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that um, you've probably got this wonderful uh, brand new digital SLR camera with auto everything. For this sort of thing, you want to switch all the auto functions off. Um, for starters, um, most important, turn your uh, autofocus on the on the lens. Uh, it's got to be switched to manual focus. Uh, and also um, exposure, I would recommend the, the, the aperture must not change for any of the shots. So if you shoot an F16, you keep it on F16 for both the images. You can change the shutter speed, that's not a problem. So if you've got one scene here, and then you, uh, you uh, obviously move across and you've got another scene, but with the sun in shot, you're gonna have to increase the exposure, otherwise you're gonna get, uh, it's gonna be silhouetting too dark. But you can do that, you can use the, uh, you can use the shutter speed. So I'd recommend using it on manual. You um, color balance, I'd leave it on, uh, on daylight. That's the best thing. And um, that is pr pretty much it. Um, the other thing I need to just uh, tell you is, uh, once you once you've got your composition worked out, um, I'm, I'm shooting this one uh, in a panoramic um, format, and by that means you can. Let me just put my microphone down a bit. You can shoot with the camera vertical and pan around like so. Uh, and some people do that. I, I actually never done it like that, to be honest with you. Uh, not for this type of thing. I've done it for HDR domes when I'm doing my CGI car stuff. Um, and that's a completely different kettle of fish. Um, but for, for panoramics, I tend to shoot them this way. But you can shoot them in a vertical mode if you want to. So uh, first thing first is get your, um, get your camera level as possible for the first exposure. And um, you basically sort out obviously your exposure and everything shoot your picture and then what you want to do is then rotate the camera around but not too far you want to leave probably about 15 to 20 percent overlap and that will help you when you're stitching the stitching the picture that'll help the software get a good stitch so always leave a gap what i'll do in a minute i'll actually pan the video around and show you what i mean if i can do it but uh, if not we'll do it on the screencast so you need to pan the camera around again if the if the camera's not quite level don't sweat it too much, but you know, if you can, just gently just, you know, level it out again for your second frame. But it's listed, if it's a bit off, don't worry. Focal length wise, um, you can go wide, but it makes things a bit more difficult. You get a bit more distortion towards the edge of the frame normally on wide angle lenses. So I'd recommend, again, I wouldn't go, I tend not to go much wider than 35. There's not much need to, because obviously you're doing panoramic, it's going to be quite wide anyway. So uh, it will get a better result between perhaps 35 and 70. Um, or, but uh, you can try a wide angle, but I just don't, uh, they tend not to stitch as well, I find. Um, but apart from that, do what you want, you know, you can just give it a try and uh, have a play around. And uh, what we'll do in a second, I'll, uh, I'll take you through the, the overlap a little bit, just give you a better idea of what I mean. And then uh, we'll go on from there in the post-production, we'll just perhaps uh, do a quick stitch of one of the images. Welcome back. We're now back in from the cold. Um, I've got in front of me um, several 
different uh, panoramic sort of shots and uh, the one we're going to use to give you a demo on is this one I shot in Prague. Um, I was there oh, a while ago, um, basically for a couple of days, I was shooting some uh, uh, 360 HDR domes for the car photography and uh, so I was on the Charles Bridge at, uh, at dawn doing these images and I also shot some nice panoramics uh, there which is why I thought uh, it's a bit more exotic than uh, showing you a panoramic from some old field somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So here's the images on screen. I've actually, these are the uh, raw files. I've already processed them and uh, output them as uh, TIFFs. And uh, I'm going to go very brief. We've already gone through the stitching process in the previous video. Um, but I just wanted to just uh, give you a bit of demonstration again on a couple of things. So I'm just going to pull up this image to show the overlap. I couldn't really do it through the video camera uh, as good as I wanted. So here's our images at each frame. This is the, obviously the left hand frame and this one's the right hand frame. And as you can see, I've left quite a bit of overlap there um, in the shot. And this is what I was on about. If, if you allow enough overlap, you're giving the stitching software as much to play with as possible. Um, you know, if you if you only overlap a little bit on the edge, you've got less uh, less chance of a good stitch. So you always need to allow, uh, like I said, about 15-20% to overlay uh, just to uh, make sure you've got enough to for the software to uh, have a play with. So I think that's a little bit more uh, of a better demonstration than I would have done through the uh, video camera. So uh, there we go. So uh, always allow uh, plenty of overlap in your images when doing this. So let's just get rid of that. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is just highlight these two images, these two TIFF files. You can use the DNG files if you want to. In fact, we could go ahead and just do that as a demo uh, and go up to your uh, menu at the top here, go to tools, Photoshop and Photo Merge and uh, that loads the photo merge uh, as I mentioned before I tend just to leave this on auto uh, you can have a play with the other options but uh, if it ain't broken don't fix it that's my motto um, so leave it on auto and click OK and that's now going to process those two DNG files into a panoramic and uh, we'll come back to that second when it's finished processing Okay, so here's our um, pano on screen. Um, I'll just zoom out a bit. Okay, it looks a bit like the dog's been chewing it, but uh, we can soon sort that out. We can just uh, go in and crop down the edges here, like so. And go on, there we go. It's done this a bit more, but um, you get the idea. I'll just go in and get down like that. Okay, um, so there we go. So uh, let's go and have a quick close inspection. Um, it amazes me. Uh, CS2 photo merge was okay. Um, it didn't support 16-bit, which uh, I prefer to work in. Um, but CS3 was one of the main things, reasons for me upgrading to CS3 was the photo merge was uh, quite a lot better um, and it just amazes me um, if you just click off these uh, one of the layers there, you can see the join and uh, it's just amazing, just amazing job. The only problems you might get now and again is um, where you've got movement. I mean, actually, if you can see here in the shots, you've got these ghosted people walking across the Charles Bridge there, which I caught, which you could go in and retouch out. Wouldn't be a lot of fun, I don't think. Um, I think I had to retouch some on another shot, and uh, it's uh, a bit fiddly and time consuming. Um, but the only, the only problem you might get on some of these pictures, if you've got um, water in a shot, or say uh, grass in the foreground. I've done. I did one a while ago um, on from one of the exhibitions I did last year, and uh, the shot had uh, reeds in the foreground and all grass. I think it was well and reeds and grass. It was two different ones. And where the uh, where the reeds have moved in between shots in the wind, it caused me a few problems. So I had to go in there and uh, do a bit of retouching. But on the whole, uh, ninety nine percent of the time on shots like this, it's just uh, amazing, really. Um, I don't know how it does it, but it does it, and it does it well, and it certainly beats hand stitching uh, pictures, uh, which uh, is uh, very time consuming and uh, not a lot of fun, to be honest with you. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it's some interest. Um, don't forget, check out the forum, uh, Profoto Insights forward slash forum. And uh, also, as you uh, mentioned in the last video, you can now download these videos in high res uh, to keep, um, and that will be available on the videos to purchase uh, webpage on the site. Anyway, until next time, cheers and thanks for watching.